Hi, in this video we keep on working with TinyDB and App Inventor and in the last video we added this functionality so when the user is gonna, uh, when the developer in our case is gonna click on a certain button it's gonna clear all, all the database. <clears throat> now for development uh, and testing purposes it's useful uh, to see uh, what are the values in the database uh, at any given point and for that reason we have specified this button right here uh, which is again for testing purposes so when uh, I as a developer I'm going to tap or click on this button on the emulator then I'm going to check uh, the database uh, values so let's go ahead and uh, do uh, that so we're going to use uh, the event uh, when button check db is clicked then the first thing that we need to do is actually <coughs> to check uh, whether the database is empty. In order to do that, uh, we need to go to the available blocks of um, TinyDB. And remember, the get tags uh, procedure actually returns a list of all of the tags uh, in the database. Now, in order to check uh, whether the list that is returned from the database is empty. We're going to use the is list empty uh, block from the list uh, block. And if that's the case, uh, then we're going to use the notifier to give a feedback message uh, to the uh, developer. So let's actually check uh, in the emulator what we did. So if I would, I'm going to clear also. So let's, so if I would click this button, I cleared the database. So now the database doesn't have any value. So if I would check this button, I would expect to see this uh, message. Uh, which is the which uh, is the case. <coughs> now I need to add obviously an else a block. So if uh, the database is not empty, then what we need to do is to actually uh, get all of the tags, get all of the values, and uh, show them back to the developer. For that, for that reason, we need to initialize first a local variable and I'm going to give it the name uh, db value and we're going to uh, initialize it to an empty string. Now in order to go through uh, all of the values in the database we need a for each uh, block. So for each of the items in the list that is uh, returned with uh, the get ta tags procedure, we're gonna set uh, the db value to uh, the values that exist in our database. So for that we need to call uh, the get uh, value procedure. Now the tag in this case is we get it from well it's this uh, for each from the for each uh, block and so we, we actually now have inserted uh, a, a value of one item in, in the db value. Since uh, this is a for each loop, we actually need to uh, use the, the join block and join whatever value existed 
in the DB value with the new value that we get from the database and set it back uh, to the same variable. Uh, once we have uh, done that, we're actually uh, ready to call our notifier. and uh, show the results uh, to the user. As you can see here, I have an error message because I haven't uh, placed uh, the block in the right position, which disappeared uh, when I did that. So I should have placed the call notifier within uh, the local variable uh, db value. So let's go and check in the emulator uh, the result. So we have cleared uh, the uh, database. So what we're going to do, we're going to uh, insert uh, a login. So this needs to be an email. Uh, remember, still in my code, I do not take into account the name of the user. So we still need to do that. So once I've submitted the data, I get uh, that message. So hopefully now, if I check uh, my database, I'm going to see the value that I uh, just uh, inserted. Now let's go ahead and insert a second value. So, uh, let's go ahead and insert another test value. Submit the data. I get that uh, feedback message. I'm going to check the database and I see now that there are actually two values in my database. Let's go ahead and insert a third value. I'm going to submit the data. I get, uh, again, the same feedback message. If I check my database, I'm going to see the three values of my database. Of course, if I would click the clear uh, database button, it's going to clear it. Now, there's uh, one thing left that we need to do and that is to add uh, the information that we capture from the uh, login. And for that, we just need to add another item in the uh, list that we did uh, in a previous uh, video. And we need to make sure now that we have the text box uh, name so the, whatever the user inserts on that text box is going to uh, be added to this list. And this list is then going to be added as a value uh, to our database. So let's go ahead and check that in the emulator. So first I'm going to clear the uh, database. So if I check now, I should see the message that there are no values in my database. So here, I'm going to insert some, some test values. So let's insert Rob first. So now I inserted both uh, Rob's login and name. If I check the database, I see both uh, the values. Let's go ahead and insert another test value. Submit the data and get again the feedback message. If I check now the database, I see both uh, user values. In the next video, well, uh, since this is uh, not the way to actually present the data, well, you could argue that this is one way of presenting the data to the user. Probably this is not the most effective one. Uh, I'm going to show you how to present the data uh, using uh, labels in the interface.